Well, uh, thank you, Katie, for the opportunity. And let's start with the, uh, the topic for today's class is going to be semantics. And sometimes, you know, you got this idea, and I've heard it, uh, that semantics is something that is kind of like uh, superficial and not important when you're dealing with, uh, with the real substance of what we want to talk about. Sometimes people say, oh, well, that's just a matter of semantics. But semantics is actually a very important, it's very important because as you can read in the title, semantics is the way in which language links to reality. So you can have the structure of the language, you can have uh, the sounds of the language, but at the end you need to know how language is going to grab those words, those constructions, and it's going to be attached to some representation in reality. So what I want to talk about today a little bit, I suppose because the topic could be just sort of inexhaustible, I want to talk about how language relates to reality based mostly on the words we use. So we're going to talk a lot about lexical semantics. So let's start. Okay. So what is meaning, and everybody I suppose knows you know, uh, where this image comes from. You know it? Where did it come from? <laughs> Humpty Dumpty, okay, from Alice in Wonderland. And this is a very interesting, you know, uh, Lewis Carroll was actually an expert in, in logic, symbolic logic. And besides liking to take pictures of uh, little girls, he also liked, you know, writing uh, fiction and logic. So when I use a word, Humpty Dumpty said in a rather scornful tone, it means just what I choose it to mean, neither more nor less. The question is, said Alice, whether you can make words mean so many different things. Well, the question is, said Humpty Dumpty, which is to be mastered, that's all. So you have here, you know, you have here a problem between uh, what do we want words to mean and if words could mean many different things. Do you think words could mean many different things at the same time? For instance, an example? Color. Color? Color. Like, like color green? green? Well, I mean, like color green or like color person, or there's so many different levels. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I didn't know that like color was actually, you know, you know, English is not my native language. But color, I only use color as color green. But it means something else then? Hmm, that's interesting. I learned something new today. And another word that you could use in many different ways? Facebooking. Facebooking? Like it is the stalker version of Facebooking? <laughs> French friendly version of Facebooking? I suppose that's true. Um, so you can see that the problem with Humpty Dumpty is that he wants to he wants to master, he wants to control individually the way words mean. Is that possible? Can we have can we exert individual control over over words mean? What's the problem with that? Can I decide, you know, I decided that today the word, I don't know, the word uh, pimple means this object here. And I'm gonna go around talking, yeah, you know, like this people is awesome, you know, it's good to what? Can I do that? No, what do I need to do? To make a word, you know, to make the meaning of a word understandable, I have to. Mm, okay, individual and then what? Context and we have to share the context. There is a shared, there is a shared element, there is a conventional element. So there is a representational level, we represent things, we give names to things, we represent to those representations, but those representations must be shared. There should be a convention, and that's a problem there. So meaning then is what you understand, is what you understand when something is said. So meaning is related to understanding. And also, we have to think about if we have only one way of understanding things, of understanding language, of understanding what is said. And what I just said before is, to understand, we need to have representations, but also we need to share those representations in the form of conventions. The first, word, the first way in which we're going to do some understanding is related to how language expresses an objective point of view related to reality. We want to have some kind of objective idea. We have to have we want to have a very straightforward representation of what we're saying, so we can be understood. For instance, uh, we can talk about the weather today, and I can say something like, "Well, it's raining outside." So if you can see outside of the window, can you tell me is that correct? 
Do I know, if I say, hmm, it's raining outside, do you think I know what the expression it's raining outside means? Mean if I just look outside and say it? No, because, because it's not raining, then it's false. My, my statement can be considered true or false. And if I know how to use language properly to relate language to reality, then I can have an expression and tie it to reality in a way that would be true or false. For instance, Rice University is located in Houston, Texas. If I say that a statement is true or false, it's true because for all intents and purposes, as of today, this building and everything is located here, but it could happen that one day, you know, a tornado comes, you know, and it moves everything to Oklahoma. It is possible, and then we're going to have to say, well, actually, no, it's not true. But as of, the, as, of, as of today, the situation is as described. Then, what a funny thing, your whiteout is pregnant. If I say that, what a funny thing, everybody knows what, what a whiteout is? White out is? Okay, oh, your whiteout is pregnant. True or false? Is it true if I say that? That would be awesome. That would be awesome, you know, would you know who, you know, but I would, I would know who was responsible, you know, for getting, you know, white out pregnant, it's kind of, you know, like a, an awesome task to perform. But, uh, no, actually it can't. It can't be true. So, one thing that is important is that we can approach meaning as the relationship between what we know, what we know about reality, and then seeing reality matches the description provided in the statement. That's a possibility. However, this is a very restrictive and a very straightforward connection that goes one to one between language and reality. And the thing that, con that controls that kind of uh, matching is the notion of truth. And in order to do that, we need to know a lot of logic, symbolic logic, so we can actually predict, you know, and we can, uh, we can, um, the word would be map, or we can describe properly in formal terms what's the relationship between a statement and reality. However, think about the, uh, the white out again. Reality can be a little bit fuzzy, okay? Sometimes it is not easy to determine what things are and if they are true or false because we actually want to talk about things in a more suggestive way, okay? So your white out is pregnant, again. Do you think that makes sense? Somehow, now impossible. Is that a white out? Yes. It looks pretty pregnant to me. What can I say your white out is pregnant in this kind of situation and the sentence is not, ah, oh, that's false. You laugh. It makes sense. Remember that. It, it's making sense. Why does it make sense? <coughs> Okay, yeah, it's a white out. Kind of like swollen, like. <coughs> yeah, it's swollen, you know, it's like this, this, uh, the silhouette, the shape reminds us of a pregnant woman. So we can say it's pregnant. Of course, you know, this is an extension in the meaning. I'm representing, I'm providing some information that is matched to some reality, but not only to talk about it if it is true or false, it's because I want to be creative, I want to suggest more information with the language I'm using. It's not only that I want you know, to go from reality to language, and be, or, visit, or vice versa, by saying it's true or false. So as we can say, there is, nothing to, there is nothing to say in terms of being true or being false. It's more, it's more related to the way we represent things or what we want to convey. Remember, it's about understanding. What do we understand by this? So there are plenty of more cases of reality beyond fuzzy. And what I want to say, what I want you to understand at this point is not that reality can be a uh, hot part of things you know, that we cannot define very well, which actually it can be. But the thing is that we have to use language to deal with those situations, and we use language creatively. For instance, everybody knows, uh, everybody here knows what Catholics do on Good Friday? What they can eat, what they cannot eat? Please. Okay, yeah, Catholics can't eat meat, red meat, but they can eat fish, okay? So there was a moment in which I remember clearly my brother and I were sitting on the table, Good Friday, and we were expecting, okay, we're going to eat fish. And then, my, and then my mother brings, you know, something she made that had this. 
And my brother said, come on, this is not fish. And my mom, of course, this fish is tuna. But this is not fish, you open a can, you know, I want fish. <laughs> my brother was thinking of this fish, good fish, not the bad fish. A good fish swings, has scales, you know, fins and everything. That doesn't look like fish to me at all. <laughs> but it's fish. And you can see that it makes sense. The discussion, you know, of course, you know, since I like semantics, I was so happy that I was like, oh, can I record you guys? Because it was really awesome that my mom was, ah, but this is fish. I'm like, no, no, you know what I mean. I want, I want real fish. So both are fish. If you can check, you know, the, I don't know, the molecules and the, you know, the DNA, everything. It's like, okay, tuna or whatever it is. Perhaps it was not tuna. Who knows? My mom was wanted to go cheap sometimes. So, uh, and then you have the real fish. So what's the difference, you know, why is this, what, what's the fuss about? What do you think, you know, like, give me an idea, why is it a valid discussion? You know, say, ah, oh, come on, that's a stupid discussion. However, as a discussion, it still makes sense. Why do you think it makes sense? Ideas, suggestions, why? Hmm, please, again. Maybe the catfish feels less special. Like, since it's Good Friday, it's a special occasion, so somehow the ordinariness of a canned, canned tuna is not as like, appealing as like, a real cold fish. Excellent. Excellent point of view because in some sense, yeah, the, the context in which, in which we, you are assuming that you can eat something like fish makes it special. So this, this thing you are calling fish is not the thing I'm expecting to be called fish. And actually a fish, you know, like they say, if you want to teach a kid, you know, okay, now I'm going to teach you how to draw fish. I don't draw a can, I don't go like, oh, that's a fish, you know, like throw it in the water and it's gonna swim, I, I guess. No, I mean, you, you have to draw something like the other fish, like the good fish. But there is a scale of things that we think are more correct, or let's put another word, correct is not a good word for linguistics, actually, it's more appropriate, or we think it's more basic to our knowledge of fish. A fish that has been processed is less real or less natural of fish. Not a fish that can swim or looks as if it could. So, what I've been talking about so far is the difference between sense and reference, or at least one way to look at the difference between sense and reference. So, when I was talking about how language relates to reality in a one to one relationship that could be measured by using a criterion of true or uh, validity or, uh, or falsity, let's put it like that, true or false, that is reference. If we can talk about things, if we can use language to refer, that means to point at things out there in the real world, then we can use language to do that and we can talk about the meaning of an expression. For instance, uh, if I talk about, let's go just to this part here, okay? Let's go just to this. The morning star refers to the planet Venus. Everybody knows what the morning star is. Know, in the morning, very, you know, like before the crop of dawn, you can see outside and you can see this bright star. And that bright star actually is the planet Venus. So there is a thing outside in the world, or what we consider to be the universe, that corresponds to the expression of the morning star. However, we also have to say that the evening star is the planet Venus. So we have that the expression, the morning star, and the expression, the evening star, both refer to the same object, to the same reality, correct? However, and that thing is informative. We can say, oh, I didn't know before that the morning star and the evening star were the same thing. So the reference is shared. However, if I say something like, Venus is Venus, that is not informative. That is a, that is a tautology. I don't get any information. However, both the reference is the same. If I say something like, for instance, if I say, of course, you know, the evening star is the morning star, that informs me of something. Because even if those two, even if those two expressions, morning star and evening star, have the same reference, they have different senses. That's the point. If, they, if, you, have, if you have a linguistic expression, the linguistic, the linguistic expression can refer to something in reality, but there is an attached, you know, there is something added up to it, and it's a sense, what you understand about it. So that's why, you know, 
At one level, they have pure tautology, and uh, at another level, they can have some really informal statement. So the difference here is the same as do you remember set theory when you talk about uh, defining a set by extension and by intention? Do you remember that? So what is the set of the planets? You can define it by extension, and you can say, well, the set of the planets is Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Neptune, and that's it. Pluto was demoted, so it's going to have never for Pluto, no loss of Pluto anymore. And you can also, that's extension of the set, but you can actually define it by, by intention and saying, you know, like only X is a member of the solar system and is a planet. And that's, that's all you need. That is, that's the sense. Okay? That's the difference. So, besides that, there is also another way of understanding. So we, we saw, we just saw how we can understand things based on the reference, linguistic expressions have reference, but we can also talk about how we understand things in terms of how we are using language and how it relates to, for instance, stations like if somebody says groovy and somebody says 